The story goes that high up in the Alps lived a devil bird. The bearded vulture. It was wrongly believed that they would soar overhead on the lookout for live lambs and even young children to carry away. This depiction in the early 20th century fueled a negative perception. As a result, in 1913, the species went extinct across the Alpine regions in Europe when the last bearded vulture was shot and killed in Italy. I want to learn more about what it takes to bring back a species from extinction. My first stop is in the Fauna Centre in Valcalent in Lleida, Spain. Hello. So this is a really unique centre because not only does this centre get lots of injured birds and bearded vultures that have been brought in, perhaps they've hit some power lines, perhaps they've experienced things like poisoning, they've been brought in to be looked after, but they've actually got a number of really important breeding pairs as well that are integral to the bounce back and the increase in population of these bearded vultures. This is Kadacho. He does things a little differently. He arrived to the centre already being hand-reared and so recognises humans as his own species. As a result, he's paired with one of the team here, Alex. Every year during the breeding season, it's Alex's job to ensure Kadacho is prepared to rear a new chick. Feeding the birds, it's time. <laughs> si, 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 si. Do you need a hand? In my case, with my imprinted male, I need to go each day in the aviary, sit with him in the nest. So I have to go inside with wool, with sticks. So I give him some sticks. He keep pick them up come to the nest with the sticks, give me them in my hands. So I put it with him together, we, we reproduce, so we are reconstruction the nest and things like that. So I stimulate him to enter in the breeding. Afterwards, I need to offer him an egg mm. to start to incubate. So that's why I go normally with this back inside in the nest. Can we yeah. see? Yes, of course. Yeah. So we have, it's always like with wool and inside I go with a dummy egg. Once they lay the egg, the pair shares responsibilities and incubates the clutch for around 54 days. So as soon as I offer him, he starts to incubate. Okay. And that's the period where I have to enter each day for one hour, more or less, yeah. to give him the opportunity to go out, to make a rest, to eat, to make his uh, feather cleanings, drinking, all that. And so in that way, we are more or less four or five weeks together doing this work. Wow. As soon as we have a chick, then we can exchange the, the dummy egg for a chick. Hopefully, Kadacho is ready for another season of being a foster parent. In the weeks that Kadacho is incubating, I head to the mountains. Here, there is another team working around the clock to help rewild bearded vultures. I'm particularly interested in meeting with Paquillo Rodriguez. He, like Alex, has also dedicated his life to conserving birds of prey. During the breeding season, the chicks are Paquillo's responsibility 24 hours a day. Do you enjoy being a vulture dad? Yeah, <laughs> a lot. I have been father of, of a lot of bearded vultures and another, another kind of uh, raptors. And when you know that they are breeding in the wild and doing uh, properly in the wild and everything, you are very, very happy. Why birds? I like every animals and plants, but birds of prey for me are... I don't know <laughs> how to explain my... You do, sometimes animal. you can't explain, you know? No, yeah. Since we arrived here in 2000, 2006, we have raised 97, more or less. Wow. Just here in Andalusia? Just here in the breeding zone, <clears throat> in Guadalente. That's so many. Yeah. Some of them are flying out of Spain. Some, some of them are kept in captivity for breeding. It depends on the, yeah. on, on the individual. 
1978, the Bearded Vulture Reintroduction Project was launched in the Alps. While not all bearded vultures can be released to the wild, this work is critical. Bearded vultures act as an umbrella species. This means that their presence actually helps to keep mountain environments in a healthy balance. They are, of course, scavengers and act as nature's cleanup crew, eliminating potentially harmful bacteria and the spread of diseases. Today, there are over 250 bearded vultures, including 50 breeding pairs across the Alpine regions in Europe. But despite the success of the project, there are still issues that these birds face. How much of a problem is poisoning? Many people have these kind of pesticides at home and they use for killing uh, foxes and animals like this. They, they don't want to kill specifically the bearded vulture, but the, the bearded vulture is uh, one of the first species that are able to find poison baits. And, uh, it's a very big problem because you are you are talking about a species that takes a long time to start for to start breeding to do everything and they are very territorial. Mm -hmm. In this natural park, we can we can have between thirteen and fifteen pairs. So, if somebody uses the poison and kills three four birds, that's significant. It's terrible for the for the population. And the pity is when somebody tells you, oh, this bird, blah, 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 dead, is that because of poisoning or, sh or uh, shooting? You are sad and you are very, very angry because you, you spend a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of work with, with all of them. Of course, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a feeling very difficult to describe. I think it's okay. Finito. Finito. We feed the other? Yeah. Okay. By the time I arrive back down south of the centre, things with Kadajo have moved a lot quicker than planned. I'm going now to the, to the aggregate, to my imprinted male, and we will try to do the adoption of the chick and that's a very sensitive uh, situation moment. Yeah, it's the moment where more accidents happen, nothing like that. The risk is that if there's too much time between Kadajo stopping incubating and the time that the chick is placed in the nest, then the chick could be rejected or even killed. Alex must very carefully place the chick in the nest without Kadajo spotting what's going on. Although the team have done this time and time again, a chick so small being brought into this environment comes with big risk. We don't, don't know. know. It's, it's a very, I say, it's a very complicated situation for yep. a bird. No, we don't know if during all this time, these hours, was enough to stop completely the its breeding behavior or not? Right. A big question mark. Kadajo looks nervous and really unsure. But thankfully, there was a shift in behavior. This delicate process is repeated for every single chick. But at this point, the team can only hope that the chick will survive. That's a good sign, no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kadajo has accepted the chick. How are you guys feeling? Good. Relieved. <laughs> <laughs> Every step of the way, I've seen how the dedication and passion of each person working on this project makes all the difference. For this chick, there's still a long way to go. 
However, this successful adoption means it will likely join those to be released into the wild later this year. Thanks to the work of the VCF, the story of the bearded vulture today is a little different. It's no longer a story of one dragon-like bird, but instead a tale of changing perceptions, real highs and lows, and perseverance to bring a crucial species back from extinction.